Confident Cybersecurity gives an outline of cybersecurity as a whole field. It covers the technical, the human, and the physical. Everything from technical vulnerabilities to social engineering to cyber war. It's tailored for different audiences. So there is a chapter on cybersecurity for the board. There is information for people who are interested in cybersecurity as a career. And there is guidance for individuals and for organizations practical guidance and steps that they can take to be more secure. I wanted to write the kind of book that I would have loved to have read 10 years ago when I was first starting out in this industry for my career. Cybersecurity is a fascinating field, but it is broad and it can feel quite intimidating. So my work has always been about demystifying cybersecurity, about breaking it down for people. And so it was really great to be able to put that into a book format. Some of the most common threats that we're seeing in the cybersecurity landscape at the moment are based on social engineering scams. Social engineering scams are where people are manipulated into giving over information or money um, or access to information or money by criminals who are posing as someone you trust. And they've risen hugely in numbers and in sophistication in recent years. Over the last six months, what we've had a really big problem with is criminals who are seeking to take advantage of COVID-19 and the fear, uncertainty and doubt that, of course, many of us are feeling in response to the pandemic. They're trying to use this fear, uncertainty and doubt to manipulate us into clicking links, downloading attachments or transferring money. We all want more information about COVID-19. Many of us want to help as well. And criminals know this and they're trying to use it in their scams, which has made COVID-19 the biggest topic that phishing emails and phishing messages have ever seen. Organisations have really been through a forced digital transformation in the last six months and this has massively opened up the threat landscape. Many organisations have made changes both technical and to do with the workforce that they perhaps were planning for the next three or five years and they ended up having to make those changes within three to five days, sometimes overnight for some. Um, this has included, for example, shifting more readily to the cloud or um, empowering many more people to be able to work from home than they previously had. So it's massively opened up the threat landscape. Organisations that were maybe just having to secure some office premises are now having to make sure they've secured everybody's houses and home networks. The unfortunate answer um, when it comes to which organizations are most at threat from cybersecurity breaches is that all organizations are under threat from a cybersecurity breach. Law firms, financial services, technology companies, and of course, even small companies, unfortunately, are at risk. One huge rise we've seen in recent weeks has been ransomware attacks targeted at universities with students um, returning to university and with healthcare organisations. And this has been around Europe. Universities and healthcare organisations have um, been targeted with ransomware attacks. And this is where data is encrypted um, and is locked down by the criminals and held to ransom. Artificial intelligence, AI, is of course both an asset and a threat, just like any tool or technology. AI is already, of course, being used in cybersecurity to enhance our defences. And while we're yet to see it being used large scale in a cyber attack, we should absolutely anticipate it. Of the three sides to cybersecurity, human, technical and physical, the one that's most vulnerable is probably the one that you're paying least attention to, unfortunately. Um, but really, 
The bigger answer is that we can't separate them out. Attacks now often span two or three of those domains. So for example, you may have a ransomware attack that is delivered by social engineering. So it's a human attack, it encrypts data, so it's technical. And if it's say targeted at a hospital, then it could function, uh, it could impact the functioning of that hospital and that then makes it a physical attack as well. So we need to stop just separating these three out and understand the interdependencies between the human, the technical and the physical sides. To transform weakness in cybersecurity into strength, it's my belief and my experience that education is key. Educating yourself, your colleagues, your family and your friends is really at the heart of helping all of us be more secure. And to do that effectively, it's about recognizing what is relevant to different people when it comes to security, because security is important to everyone in society. And I think we're more aware of that this year than ever before, because we have relied on technology more than ever to help us navigate through COVID-19. The more we rely on technology, as much as that offers so many benefits, it also opens up vulnerabilities. So it's important that we help educate people by communicating what's relevant to them and by being empowering and positive and helping them feel more confident with cybersecurity.